What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the shop. Now today I'm going to build a mini workbench. And you say, what the hell does he want a mini workbench for? He's already got a massive workbench. Well, this workbench is about 40 inches off the ground. Um, a standard workbench is about 36 inches. So like a kitchen worktop are often between 33 and 36 inches off the ground. That's all well and good if you're five foot tall, but if you're six foot two, even with a higher than average workbench, you still have to bend down I find that I'm, as I'm getting into more finer and finer, say woodworking projects, dovetail and just trying to practice a few different things, bending down like this sucks. Even for planing, for trying to get in and to see what you're doing for detail work, it's killing the back. So I want to make a mini workbench to sit up on top of this workbench. And uh, this will be a good project for anybody who hasn't got much space, who wants to do some fine hand tool woodworking and who wants a workbench but isn't going to build something this size. If you want something that you can just pull out, set up and work on, this could be a good project for you too. Or anybody like me who's a little bit taller, who has a workbench and finding bending down to try and do your detail work is killing your back. Um, these mini workbenches are ideal. So the plan is, I want to be an extra foot off the top of my workbench. So a nice working height for me would be about here. So that's where I want my voice to be. So I can work on my dovetails, my different kind of joints. And also when I'm planing, when I'm working on some fine stuff, I want to do some kind of detail planing. Um, up about a foot from the top of this is exactly where I want to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pull off this voice off my bench. Um, and I'm going to leave the end voice on. I'm going to incorporate this into my mini work Bench. So my workbench, I'm going to make it out with this piece of maple that I have here. I also have a nice ash board, which I might make the legs out of. So we're going to be a maple top. It's going to be two foot long by about, I'm going to make it the width of my jaws and my voice, which is just over 14 inches. I might just take them down to 14 inches. So we'll say two feet by 14 inches wide. I want to be able to use it lengthways and I also want to be able to turn it this way on my um, bench so that I can have my voice at this end and to clamp my um, pieces for dovetailing and stuff like that. And then turn it back this way for when I want to plane. Um, it'll all be kind of small, fine stuff that I'll be using this for. But uh, yeah, bending down is killing the back. So without further ado, let's take this rough piece of uh, hard maple. Let's uh, machine it down, all the pieces. We'll get a, some legs out of this ash board and we might actually put some walnut in between the laminate. So we'll make a laminate top and we might as well stick these two pieces of offcuts of walnut in the middle just to make it a little bit fancy. So uh, yeah, without further ado, let's crack on now and machine this thing down. Okay, so we have our board milled down now. It's square, true, and perfectly flat. So what I want to do now is cut this into two foot sections. Um, I have some walnut also milled down to the same thickness. Um, it's about eight mil in thick, thickness this way. And we are down to, let's see, just about 35 mil in the thickness of the board this way. That's after we took the cup, the twist and everything out of it and got it perfectly flat. We're down to 35 mil. So these are the same. So what I'd quite like to do is have um, a center section of maple with two walnut pieces of walnut on either side. So it will essentially go maple, walnut, maple, walnut, maple. So what I'm going to do is cut this into two foot and I want two, I want three five inch, inch sections of maple then. So it'll be five inch then we'll have our walnut five inch center piece, then our walnut and a five inch piece on the edge. And uh, yeah, two nice walnut stripes down the center, I think is gonna look best. So chop saw and then table saw, let's do that.
Okay, slight change of plan again. I don't actually have enough to get three five inch sections out of these two boards. So I'm gonna have a center piece of walnut, just a nice walnut stripe straight down the center of this worktop. And the issue I'm gonna have is I wanna attach this voice, the voice the very same as that one down there onto the, to the end of this workbench. So it's gonna go right here where the voice is now. And this has a bench dog on it. So I'm gonna have a series of bench holes or dog holes down this bench. Now I don't want to drill them into my um, walnut stripe. So what I'll actually do is I'm gonna offset the voice to roughly about there. So imagine this voice now is fixed to the end of this bench. I'm gonna cut these boards back. I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller cause it is a mini workbench after all. This voice is probably, you know, it's a little bit on the large side for this, but it's the voice I have, it's the voice I'm gonna use. So then we'll have a run of dog holes straight down here. And that will make it easier then for planing cause I'll be standing on this side of the bench anyway. So I'll be closer to where my piece will be clamped and where I can plane. So yeah, it'll all work out. So that's gonna be the top of my workbench now. So we're gonna clamp this up and glue this up. Let's do that. Right, let's glue this thing together. As always, it's always important to do a dry run first when you're clamping anything. So make sure you set your clamps up and know how you're gonna clamp it together and make sure everything is gonna work. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually clamp this from the top. This is a perfectly flat work surface and these boards are perfectly flat. So everything sitting on this now is it's perfectly flat, nice to flat worktop. So I glue it and I'm gonna clamp it from the top and leave it sit flat on this so I'll know that it is flat. I've left my, um, say it for me, my walnut a little bit longer at each end. I can flush cut that off when I'm done. I'll true up both ends of this when I'm ready. The reason I've done that is with tin pieces like that running through the planer, you can get snipe on the ends. So the snipe will be on a small bit on either end. So leave that stick out and you can flush cut that off so you don't end up with a gap in your joint. If you were to push it in flush with the end of this. Sometimes you get a little bit of snipe, although that looks pretty good. Doesn't look like there's any snipe there, but just in case, you can leave it stick out like that. Make sure you have a good joint the whole way up. And uh, yeah, so let's get this thing glued up. Just a bit of glue on it. I'm not gonna put any biscuits or dowels or anything like that because believe it or not, the glue itself is actually, makes a stronger joint than the wood itself. So there's no need for that. Usually biscuits and uh, dowels don't actually add any strength. What they do is keep everything aligned when you're clamping and gluing, which is also important. Make sure I get plenty on there. Spread it right out to the edges. It's easy to wipe it off if there's too much afterwards. Better have too much than too little. You can just take a damp cloth if any gets on your top on the face side of your workpiece and you can just wipe it off so don't worry about it we'll be doing some sanding after this anyway a bit of squeeze out between the joints is what you want and as you're going, just make sure that everything remains nice and flat. Again, just a damp cloth, give it a bit of a rub before the glue sets. You can scrape it off afterwards if it gets if too much gets on, but you can see a wet cloth and all the glue is gone. So that's a little tip feet. Right, that's our top clamped. That's the top of our workbench clamped up there now. So uh, onto the legs. Right guys, top is now glued. I've let it set for a couple of hours. It's not fully set yet, but it's okay to work with. I'm not gonna stress it too much. Now I just wanna true up both ends of this thing. So we're gonna use this chop saw. It's a fantastic uh, saw and it's gonna be good and square. So uh, yeah, we'll just square up the ends now. Let's do that. Get some ear protection.
Right, this is where we're at. I've taken the bench or, or the voice off the bench and uh, it's a bloody heavy voice. It's a little bit large for this project, but it's what we've got, so it's what I'm gonna use. I have my top of my mini workbench ready to go, so that's glued up. That has to fit on just about here, so I'm gonna leave my voice slightly off center so that I'm not drilling my dog holes down the center line of where I have my walnut strip. So it'll just be slightly off center. Now, as you can see, I have to make up this distance. This is where the bench attaches to the bottom of the voice. I'm going to need a block to attach that to, to and then fix that to my top. So what I've done is, I've just roughly milled up some ash. So I'm gonna to have to put a block in here, my bench on top of that, fix this to my ash and my ash to the top of my bench. And then I need to make my legs. So the idea is, let's flip this upside down. So hopefully this will all start to make sense. So my ash block will be there. Drop two legs off that, either side. Obviously these are going to be cut to size and then we're going to mortise and tenon in. So we're going to make a, basically make a H frame. So yeah. We have a nice bit of work to do. So what I'll do is, I won't, I won't turn them into the top. What I'll do is I'll cut a recess notch, slide it in and glue that in place. That'll be good enough for that. And then we'll uh, mortise and tenon each side of the H frame here. So it's a nice little bit of woodworking. And um, I'll show you how to knock out some mortises with, so just with hand chisels. It's a, it's a quick and easy process. So that'll be something that might be a bit interesting. So yeah, so I've just established a face side and face edge on these. I'm gonna take these back to the planer and uh, we'll size all these up to the right size and I will get back with you momentarily. Okay guys, we have all our ash pieces milled and cut to size now. So this is essentially the bench upside down. Um, so you can see the voice is gonna attach here to this ash block. Um, then our legs will be here and here. I'm gonna to have to keep the voice in the center just, it's the only way it's gonna work out. So I'm kind of engineering this thing as we go along. I haven't really got plans. The plans are all kind of germinating in my head, but the bench here yeah, will have to go in the center. So the dog holes will have to go in the center of the bench. No big deal. Just the way it has to work out. The bench or the voice is a little bit oversized for this project, but it's what I have and what we're working with. So anyway, these are our legs. I'm gonna recess them into the top. So that will be our four legs like that and then we will have our frames for our mortises and tenons and our tenons will protrude about 10 mil out the end of each leg and then we'll put little chamfers on them so we'll have protruding tenons that like they're like little decorative pieces to just to illustrate the fact that it is actually a mortise and tenon you can leave the protruding tenons just stick out and put nice little chamfers on them a little decorative design i like quite like the protruding tenons on uh, things if you don't have to cut them flush don't because like I say, it's nice to leave them stick out just to illustrate the fact that you've gone to the effort of actually making a mortise and tenon joint and doing a bit of joinery. So next thing we have to do then is take these two pieces to the table saw, cut the recess slots for our legs. Then it's a case of cut the tenons and cut the mortises out of the legs. So let's crack on. Okay, just to illustrate what we're doing here, just in case it's not clear, these are our pieces that we're gonna to fix to the underside of our top and we've, i've just marked the recesses for the legs now so we're going to just recess this 10 mil sit these legs down into these about 10 mil now we can screw them from, screw and glue from the top so this is where this cross cut carriage or cross cut sled comes into play again it's great for doing this kind of thing so i'm going to set the blade just 10 mil above this surface i can line that up and just run it through and that will give me a perfect 10 mil cut out so uh you can see uh, one of the best things you can build for your table saw is a cross cut slate and I've done a video on that and I'll leave a link in, ups there or in the description if you want to check that out. If you want to make one of these, they're very, very simple. So let's crack on and do that.
Right, we have a change of plan again. Right, no big deal. I have the legs fit into the top piece now. So I wanted to knock through my tenons, um, but as you can see, the depth I need is not quite there unless I notch a big piece out of this, which I don't think I really want to do. So what I might do is keep these pieces flush and only take a small bit out of this guy. So essentially I'll be cutting, they'll be still like tenons when you look at it from the side, but it'll be essentially a, like a bridal joint. So that will, I'll, I'll notch this here and here, here and here, cut my tenons and then slot this down from the top. And, uh, then that means I only have to take a small piece out of this just to allow for the, the mechanism for the voice to work. Otherwise, I would have to take a nice piece out of it, which I still could do, I suppose. Uh, I'm losing a lot of strength that way, so I'll keep it up here and uh, we'll make our kind of bridal joints slash mortise and tenon joints. Okay, so let's mark those out. Right, first up I want to mark the shoulders of my tenons and as this piece is exactly the same width as this piece um, I'll be leaving a 10 mil protrusion. I can just mark my shoulders off my legs as they're in place already. So there and there. We can just square that around. Same on this side. Okay. So now I want to mark out my tenons. So let me see, what's the width of this piece? It is 50 mil. So I think a 25 mil tenon should be good. That's my center line. And then let's see if I come maybe 10 millimeter side of that. And that gives me exactly 15 mil then to remove either side. So what I can do now is I can go back to my table saw, set that to 15 mil. I don't have to mark the rest of them. I just have to put this up onto my table saw, take 15 mil out of this side, 15 mil out of this side, and uh, decision made. So I'm gonna mark the other piece exactly like that now. If I was ha ha cutting these by hand with a saw, I would have to obviously mark this line, this line all the way around, cut my tenons straight down with a rip saw and then with my cross cut saw cut down this way so that's what you have to do if you haven't got a table saw but i have a table saw that i can trench with and uh, that's what i'm going to do Okay guys, we're into day two on this build now and I have about four hours of footage so far. So we're gonna make this a two-parter. So where we left off, um, we had just cut our tenons on the table saw. So they are ready to go. We just need to clean up all our joints, smooth everything off, work it back down to our shoulder lines with the chisel, cut our bridles, and then it'll be glue, screw, assemble, sand, drill our dog holes, mount our bench voice, and we're almost there. So we've, we've still have a little bit to do yet. So I'm gonna make this a two-parter because Nobody wants to sit there and watch me make stuff for a full hour. So we'll try and condense this down to about 20 minutes or so. So that's it, guys. Um, I will see you in part two. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And comments and questions below, as always. So, uh, yeah, let's rock on.